for stopping by at 10.50 a.m. on your radio dial. I am Dr. Sharon Barnes, and I will be your host for the International Wealth Builders Radio Show for the next hour here on KCAARadio.com and all your favorite streaming channels. I am the CEO and founder of ADU Advantage, where we provide customized uh, consulting services to help your dream of building an ADU a reality. And today we're going to talk about planning, building, and financing your ADU with Meredith Store. She is awesome. She's one of the forerunners in the industry. She's a go-to person for everyone dealing with ADUs, the background in the law, um, how to get it financed, tricks and tips to you know, make it more um, economical. And so it is really an honor to have you here, Meredith. Thank you so much for taking the time out your day to join us. Thanks, Sharon. You're super kind to have me. It's good to talk with you as always. <laughs> oh, yes. So Meredith is currently uh, heading the uh, ADU team over at Cross Country Mortgage. Um, they deal with helping families buy, build, renovate, and uh, refinance property and add ADUs. I mean, she, like I said, has a lot of information from your planning all the way through getting it financed. It takes a team to make an ADU a reality, whether it's a simple garage conversion or a 1,200 square foot you know, three bedroom, two bath in your backyard. You're gonna need a team, you're gonna need knowledge and resources. And Meredith is one of the ones that we really honor and look to in the industry. And uh, today, Meredith, we're just gonna jump right in and start with the big elephant in the room. <laughs> you know, with the interest rates have gone up, people are taking out their crystal balls, they're going up again, they're gonna go down. Um, and it's it's had the effect that it was intended to kind of slow the market down um, from the traditional real estate side. I've seen, I mean, we went from having a listing on the market for 48 hours to now we're 48 days beautiful <laughs> homes and we can't figure why they're not moving except when we look at the interest rates and we look at the payments that a lot of people are just out the market but once you get past that we have people who still are able to move forward with their real estate goals especially in the areas of adus but they're cautious about the interest rates and whether they should wait and so we're really interested in seeing what advice you can give us today about that elephant in the room. Did it kill our ADU project or should we be forging on? <laughs> Great question. And my uh, short answer to that is forge ahead um, for two reasons. Number one, yeah, interest rates went up, but rents went up even higher. So usually, as you know, Sharon, this is a very collaborative process. So we tend to get people pre-approved just as they're getting started, but oftentimes we don't do the loans until they're closer to the time of construction, which is six to eight months later. And that timeline is super important for two reasons. One, uh, Fannie Mae is predicting that this time next year we'll be back at 4.3%. Uh, the Chicago Fed Governor, uh, J Jamie Dimon at JP Morgan, uh, Goldman Sachs, they're all a lot of good folks, smart folks are saying, we've overdone it and uh, we're, we're crashing towards recession and recession is great for mortgage rates. Remember after the 2008 crash, rates didn't go up, they went down. Right. And so, um, so we're expecting 4.3. So by the time you are done with designs and permits, which take two to three months, and then you, you know permits are gonna be four to six months, rates should be back down again. But number two, even with rates today, rents are higher. So the folks I got pre-approved six months ago, they're going, oh my gosh, the rates are terrible. But look at the rents. And what we're finding is rents are cash flowing, even at, uh, at the higher pr payment prices, $200 more a month on average. So, um, and because rents are going up almost 50% in a lot of areas. Um, so check out that rental cash flow. That's really what you're looking at for. And if you're wondering what the question is on cost, consider this. At today's rates, for every 100000 you spend on construction, it's about 650 bucks a month. 
So move the decimal point every 10,000 is 65 bucks a month. When rates are down to 4.3%, it'll be about 500 bucks a month. So really, you know, it's, it's still, just- Still ahead of the game. That's right. right, right. That's right. So I want to um, back up and slope this a little bit because in yeah. talking with homeowners, especially that's looking to build a new, the first question and what they push on, how much is it going to cost? And try to explain to them that we need to go and design, get on paper what you're looking for. Okay. Get on paper what the, you know, what the concept is that you're going to get approved. And then we can give you an estimate, but it's not till down the line when you really can get mm -hmm. those permits or get very close to getting permitted that anyone can, can come in and actually price out, you know, the ADU. So can you talk a little bit, just a little bit about how important this is. We're not buying, you know, like a car off the lot. We're building right. it from ground up generally. Well, that's exactly right. And that's where the financing pre-approval is one of the very first things they do. Um, I've seen too many clients design these champagne castles only to later find out they're qualified for a beer budget. Um, so the first step you want to do is uh, one of the first steps you want to do is a financing pre-approval and that is in collaboration with working with you, Sharon, because you're the one on the property going, well, we could do this, 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 and then it's that collaboration between what can we afford versus what can we do. Um, and, and so that's really important and even it, in most cases, we don't do the loan until much later, but that, and then the cool part is once you know your numbers, as things progress, changes happen, we eliminate this. Oh, there's this surprise. The numbers roll with you. So yeah. you're a hundred percent confident moving forward. That's very important. Exactly. And with with all the changes that's been going on, not only with the interest rate, but the cost of goods and the supply chain and so forth, what is the like reserve? So if I have a budget and let's just say two hundred thousand dollars or whatever, then should we have twenty percent in reserve for because it might go up twenty or what are you recommending for that range, that buffer? So this, um, actually Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have a great guideline um, that has come in very handy since lumber prices started going up last summer, or the summer before last. Um, and that is a 10% reserve. So if, if your construction budget is 200,000, you wanna make sure you have $20,000 in reserves because, because of cost overruns or contingencies. You can always pay that back to the mortgage or do whatever, but if you don't have those contingencies, there's a lot of risks. The, um, the, the, the great black hole of lending is a half finished construction product. Right. No bank wants to touch that. So make sure you got your whole money ready to go. Yeah, that's really great advice. And you know what we're coming across in a lot of, um, a lot of situations, especially out in the Inland Empire where, where my base is, is that a lot of uh, people are building the ADUs for family, for either adult kids or parents. And my advice usually, I mean, you need to charge them rent. And it's not that you're being yes. hard, but it's like if they're on Social Security and they can't just collect money in the bank. They have to pay somebody. So even if they pay you, you know, rent, mom's paying you rent money, doesn't mean that you can't use that money to help her live a better life, take care, bring in nurses, housekeepers, whatever you do with the money, but you need to, to kind of charge. And I've had people who tell me that for the adult kids, they're gonna charge them some rent and everything, so they will basically be the saving account <laughs> for the adult child. So when you get enough, you can go buy a place and let's do it again. You build another ADU and have some rental income. But I guess the basic course I wanna get to and discuss just a little bit from, from your uh, viewpoint is when people are building them for family and we're calculating the dollar, sometime, a lot of times they're building them from this, the position that they're just gonna take on that debt. So how do you kind of walk through that um, with them that is still worth it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the short answer is, is you're giving your child a gonga deal. If you build a $200,000 ADU, that's 990 bucks a month, right? Yeah. 
where else are they going to rent for that? Exactly. So, um, you know, I, I think it's really important for parents to have boundaries with their kids and adult kids need to contribute to the family. They need to understand that you are not an ATM. Um, and one of the things that we actually do um, with uh, multi-generational families is we can title it as you go in on the loan together, but you title it tenants in common. And that allows for junior to own, technically own the ADU and mom and dad continue to own all of the land and the primary house. When they pass away, then they can equal, give out equal shares of the land and the house, but junior still controls the ADU. And so the other siblings are allowed to the, uh, uh, you know, benefit fairly. Right. Uh, junior um, is paying his share and frankly feels like an adult. That is a rite of passage. And right. I would charge a little more and create a savings account for them, that kind of thing. Um, I think that's, and same thing with parents. Again, right. there's no way they're gonna get a better deal. Exactly. One of the things you can do with parents, elderly parents, is if they are on Medi-Cal, and you can get on Medi-Cal if you have assets less than 300,000, you can get that qualified for in-home support services, IHSS. Right. And a lot of my families are doing that because they're getting paid by the state to take care of their parents. And exactly. that often covers the cost of ADUs. Yeah, and that would be great. And it still allows for that independence and so forth, because even though they might need a little care, they might not need, you know, that constant. that constant. But I think uh, during COVID, when, you know, the facilities got shut down and you couldn't really check on your loved ones, or even if it was short-term rehab, that now I'd rather my mother be in my backyard and me be in control and see nurses coming and going and yep. have access then to have her somewhere else. And it'll be cheaper and it's creating a better living environment for her and maybe some generational wealth along the way for the grandkids, which she would greatly appreciate contributing to. So that's that's awesome. I that's love that. Awesome. I love that. Um, I, was, I was gonna recommend when I, uh, food for thought. If you're building a multi-generational ADU, go big. My husband and I have six kids. The youngest is 16 and I swear it was a blank from when she was a baby. <laughs> and now we've got all these wives and we're looking at the prospect of grandkids and we're scrambling to build additional space on our property because we miss our kids. Yeah. We want those grandbabies. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, rather than build that little single bedroom for the college kid, before you know it, he's gonna have a wife and kids. So yes. build big. <laughs> that, that's a great food for thought as well. So, uh, and it does uh, take the property value up and there are so many mm -hmm. benefits to having the ADU completed. So this was awesome. We're going to have to take a little break here, uh, but I hope that you stay with us. Uh, we're going to come back and talk to Meredith some more. Our next segment, we're going to be talking about that $40,000 ADU grant, what it can be used for, how to access it. Meredith is definitely on the on the um, brink of that one, and she's going to give us some tips. And uh, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 